it's a windy Okay, July 18th, Farmer Bob here. So I'm in a popcorn row here. Windy day, actually. But as you can see, the crop's turning out really nice. I thought I'd do this from uh, inside a corn row. It blocked the wind a little bit, and I think that's kind of necessary. So wind is, uh, wind is our friend a lot of times, as long as it doesn't get too crazy. Um, it could cause the corn obviously to blow over. Corn is pollinated by wind. It's not pollinated by bees. A lot of people think it is, but it's not. And we just need um, to have half of what is exactly happening right now. The tassels on top have tons of pollen in them. And as the wind blows, and you can see it happening right behind me, it's shaking the uh, corn plant. And then it falls down onto the silks on top of the ears. So it's awesome. I'm happy it's happening and um, everything seems to be going pretty well so far. We could use a little bit of rain. We're not super desperate right now. And I, that's typically the biggest problem is the uh, lack of rain. But we've got just enough of it to this point. The plants look healthy. The leaves are, are good. They might be starting to turn just a little bit and curl uh, to conserve moisture. But it is nine o'clock in the morning right now. And last I looked, it was 82 degrees. So. It is a bright, beautiful day and has been uh, for a couple of weeks now. It's been in the 90s, been very, very hot. So corn, as you remember, loves heat and humidity and sunshine and whatnot. It just needs that water component, which is typically the trick. But uh, we're off the races so far. We're 67 days in on this field and I'm, I'm counting roughly 100 day corn. And uh, I'll give you a tour here of some of the plants as we walk by. And you'll notice that they have their tassels out and the ears have formed and there are silks on it. There's no insect pressure. Uh, very happy about that. Uh, looks like we applied fertilizer properly. Everything's nice, beautiful green. I'll show you some pollen on some of the leaves that have fallen from the tassels. So you get an idea of what that is. Uh, the silks are cool. I've noticed two and sometimes three ears on a plant. Uh, which is just a sign that, uh, some of it's genetics, but it's also a sign that there's enough there, uh, nutrient-wise, etc., to be able to put on a second or a third ear. Now, likely, that doesn't help us, um, maybe if we were just doing field corn, but it would be extremely unlikely that the second or third ear would produce good enough kernels for our quality standards. We won't waste them. We'll mill them into, like, corn flour or corn meal or feed them off to animals or something like that. But... Uh, as we sort and sift, the ones that don't make the grade um, do not get wasted. So that's at least good. But um, a lot of times if the, the plant is stressed, it will put everything it can into that one ear because after all, the goal of corn is to reproduce. It wants to produce as many little potential babies as possible. And what the corn that we eat is really just a seed of the plant. And corn is a grass. So think about it for a moment. You're eating uh, grass seed essentially <laughs> so uh, our our variety just happens to pop and explode and is uh, delicious as well just keep in mind that every single purchase you make of my product helps support the farm and uh, me a first generation farmer so the products non-gmo it's gluten-free it's delicious it's high in fiber it's very very healthy and quite frankly it's fun to eat it's fun to pop and make and I experiment with recipes all the time here's a quick recipe in a pot put in oil i prefer olive oil get it nice and hot turn it all the way up throw in two or three kernels when that gets ready and that does pop then put the rest of the kernels so one to three ratio um like if it were cups you do one cup oil and three cups popcorn that would produce a lot of popcorn but um so after those few kernels th uh, that you threw in there pop put the rest of the kernels in and right before you anticipate those popping put in some sugar and shake, 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 keep it moving. And uh, once the popping stops, immediately remove it from the heat or turn off the burner. But um, so here's, that's a good recipe. It's always works. It always works, that's a great recipe. But here's the twist, put some cinnamon in the sugar. So make cinnamon sugar uh, that you put in there and it is just delightful. So enjoy, thank you for purchasing my product. It's available on Amazon, walmart.com, eBay, Etsy, and of course, princetonpopcorn.com. So this might look like a tragedy here, but really it just got run over by 
the sprayer that we had come through. It's just the edge area where we've cross planted, kind of a checkerboard pattern because of doing the outer edges, but corn plants are in good health. Here, here is a tassel. Try to isolate it and hold it still for a second. As you can see, hopefully you can see it. It almost looks like rice in a way, but inside of those little guys is a powder. I'll try to find some on a leaf. Hopefully that comes through, but it literally, it's not even the texture of sand. It's like real small sand, almost like a talcum powder or something. And occasionally it's really difficult to find or to capture on camera, but you can see it in real life as the wind goes, or if you came up to it and shook it, you could see some of the pollen fall off. I doubt we'll have luck with that today because of the brightness outside. But as you can see, these are silks. Each one of those silks is, has a little tiny tube inside of it. This pollen comes down off of that lands on this, uh, the silk and it's real sticky. It's not sticky like when you take your fingers off of it, but it's sticky to the touch. And that pollen gets in that tube and each one of these silks goes down to a kernel inside of the ear. And that way it brings the pollen in and fertilizes that particular seed. So from a height standpoint, I'm guessing that's at least seven foot. And I would say our average is probably at this point, at least in this section, about six and a half feet. So when it comes down to it, you got uh, two problems. You've got uh, insects and weeds that you have to contend with. And this is a morning glory right here. And it is a lot of times with weeds, you have to worry about nutrients. They're going to take all the nutrients. As you can see on the floor here, no problem. We don't have any other real weeds except this darn morning glory. And I mean, you could pull them all day long, but they come up so quickly. And the real problem is they climb the corn. And I don't know, I, I haven't really ever had any major problems, but I'm new to farming. But as you can see throughout here, We've got it inside the field. I'm in the middle of the cornfield. And uh, here are some of the volunteer corn that popped up from our cultivating. And quite frankly, it's proof positive that they'll just never uh, reproduce. They'll never be able to. This guy, if you look at his leaves, it's all uh, shriveled up. He's dying, essentially. And they'll never get to a point where they could reproduce. I was actually worried about that. I mean, that has some pretty good root structure, but it's obviously being crowded out by the canopy. So, so far, no bug pressure, zero, zip. And uh, for that, I'm super thankful. So I guess when I look at it, we have zero insect pressure right now, and like zero zip, which is awesome. Knock on wood, I'm very thankful for that. And if I have a few morning glories here and there, I guess I could deal with that. I don't think it even has the capacity to affect anything negatively. So earworm is one thing we are worried about this year. I don't think we're going to have any issues, which is awesome. And uh, that just affects typically a lot of times the top part of the ears because that's where the bug gets in and starts eating it. But I really never factored that that would be an issue or a big deal. But do this math sometimes. If you have 213 acres planted, for instance, and you have 30,000 plants per acre, and each plant produces one ear, and you lose five kernels off of each ear. Uh, somebody out there is pretty smart. They'll do that math. And uh, <laughs> if you just you know, figure a weight on what, let's say, 10 kernels or five kernels weighs, and then do that math, you'll find that it's a huge yield loss. Not to mention, it's uh, just not good for the kernels. So, of course, we would, if we had that issue, we would sort those out before they got to you because they obviously wouldn't pop, but and they'd probably be much smaller, etc. But it's just interesting to see why farmers are so conscientious on um, weeds and insects. So these weeds here, the uh, morning glories I was talking to you about, not going to be an issue for me. Uh, this year, but if it did strangle out some corn or steal nutrients or whatnot, 
it just all comes down to that. What is your yield? And um, there's a lot of money invested in this field and I want as much popcorn out of it as possible. It's an efficiency issue. I'm trying real hard to build a great company and a vertically integrated popcorn company as a first generation farmer. So follow along, get on YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page and go to Instagram. I don't post a ton on Instagram, but uh, Facebook and YouTube are where it's at. So I do need your support. Please uh, like my videos and subscribe. Thank you.